<laughs> I lost my mom. <laughs> Hush, little monkey, don't you cry. I'll help you find her, said Butterfly. Let's have a think. How big is she? She's big, said the monkey. Bigger than me. Bigger than you? Then I've seen your mom. Come, little monkey, come, come, come. No, no, no. That's an elephant. My mom isn't a great grey hunk. She hasn't got tusks or curly trunk. She doesn't have great thick baggy knees. And anyway, her tail coils round trees. She coils round trees? And then she's very near. Quick little monkey, she's over here! No, 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 that's a snake. Mom doesn't look a bit like this. She doesn't slither about and hiss. She doesn't go around a nest of eggs. And anyway, my mom's got more legs. It's legs we're looking for now, you say? I know where is she then. Come this way. No, 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 that's a spider. Mom isn't black and hairy and fat. She'd rather eat fruit than swallow a fly. And she lives in the treetops, way up high. She lives in the trees? You should have said. Your mom is hiding above your head. No, no, no. That's a parrot. Mom's got a nose and not a beak. She doesn't squawk and squabble and shriek. She doesn't have claws or feathery wings. And anyway, my mom leaps and springs. Aha, I've got it. She leaps about. She's just round the corner without a doubt. No, no, no. That's a frog. Butterfly, butterfly, please don't joke. Mom's not green and she doesn't croak. She's not all slimy. Oh dear, what a muddle. She's brown and furry and nice to cuddle. Brown fur, why didn't you tell me so? We'll find her in no time. Off we go. No, no, no. That's a bat. Why do you keep on getting it wrong? Mom doesn't sleep the whole day long. I told you, she's got no wings at all. And anyway, she's not nearly so small. Your mom's not little? Now let me think. She's down by the river having a drink. Mm-mm. No, no, no! That's the elephant again! Butterfly, butterfly, can't you see? None of these creatures looks like me. You never told me she looked like you! Of course I didn't. I thought you knew. I didn't know. I couldn't, you see? None of my babies look like me. So she looks like you. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, we'll soon discover her hiding place. No, 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 that's my dad. Come, little monkey, come, come, come. It's time I took you home, to Mom. The end. The Gruffalo! A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house! It's terribly kind of you fox, but no, I'm going to have lunch with the Gruffalo. 
A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo! Why didn't you know? He has terrible tusks! And terrible claws! And terrible teeth! In his terrible jaws! Where are you meeting him? Here, by these rocks. And his favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? I'm off! Fox said, goodbye little mouse, and away he sped. Silly old fox! Doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. An owl saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. It's terribly kind of you, owl, but no, I'm going to have tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here by this stream. And his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To it, to woo! Goodbye, little mouse. And away owl flew. Silly old owl. Doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully good of you snake, but no. I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo! What did, why didn't you know? His eyes are orange. His tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting? Here, by this lake. And his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake, it's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse, in the way snake slid. Silly old snake, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? Gruffle? Oh! But who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, he has purple prickles all over his back. Oh help! Oh no! It's a gruffle! My favorite food, the gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see. Everyone is afraid of me. All right, said the gruffalo bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in, a le in the leaves ahead. It's Snake, said the mouse. Why Snake, hello. Snake took one look at the gruffalo. Oh, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he slid to his log pile house. You see, said the mouse. I told you so. Amazing, said the gruffalo. They walked 
some more till the buffalo said i hear a hoot in the trees ahead It's Owl, said the mouse. Why, Owl? Hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. As astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why Fox? Hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh help, he said. Goodbye little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse. You see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is beginning to rumble. My favorite food is gr Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said. And quick as the wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. The end. Kids, if you like this video, subscribe, share, and like for some more videos. Bye bye. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Montgomery Ward wishes you a Merry Christmas. It was the day before Christmas and all through the hills the reindeer were playing enjoying the spills of skating and coasting and climbing the willows and hopscotch and leapfrog protected by pillows while every so often they'd stop to call names at one little ear not allowed in their games <laughs> look at Rudolph his nose is a sight it's red as a beat Twice as big, twice as bright. Well, Rudolph just wept. What else could he do? He knew that the things they were saying were true. Where most reindeers noses are brownish and shiny, poor Rudolph's was red, very large and quite shiny. In daylight it dazzled. The picture shows that. At night time it glowed like the eyes of a cat. And putting dirt on it just made it look muddy. Oh boy was he mad when they nicknamed him Ruddy. Although he was lonesome, he always was good, obeying his parents as good reindeer should. That's why on this day, Rudolph almost felt playful. He hoped that from Santa, soon driving his sleigh full of presents and candy and bodies and toys for good little animals, good girls and boys. He'd get just as much, and this is what pleased him, as the happier, handsomer reindeer who teased him. So as night and a fog hid the world like a hood, 
He went to bed hopeful. He knew he'd been good. Why away? Way up north on this same foggy night, old Santa was packing his sleigh for the night. This fog, he complained, will be hard to get through. He shook his round head, and his tummy shook too. Without any stars or a moon as our compass, this extra dark night is quite likely to swamp us. To keep from collisions, we'll have to fly slow. To keep our direction, we'll have to fly low. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys and girls' faith would be shaken if we didn't reach them before they awaken. Come Dasher, come Dancer, come Prancer and Vixen, come Comet, come Cupid, come Donner and Blitzen. Be quick with your supper, get hitched in a hurry, you too will find Fogger the Lay in a worry. Then Santa was right, as he usually is, the fog was as thick as a soda's white fizz. Just not getting lost needed all Santa's skill, with street signs and numbers more difficult still. He tangled in treetops again and again, and barely missed hitting a tri-motored plane. He still made good speed, with much twisting and turning, as long as the street lamps and house lights were burning. At each house, first knowing the people who lived there, he'd quickly select the right presents to give there. By midnight, however, the last light had fled, for even big people have then gone to bed. Because it might wake them, a match was denied him. Oh my, how he wished for just one star to guide him. Through dark streets and houses all Santa fared poorly. He now picked the presents more slowly, less surely. He really was worried, for what would he do? If folks started waking before he was through. The air was still foggy, the night dark and rare, when Santa arrived at the home of the deer. A ledge that he chirped on while skiing the chimney, gave Santa a spill and a painfully skinned the knee. The room he came down in was blacker than ink. He went for a chair and then found it a sink. The first reindeer bedroom was so very black. He tripped on the rug and fell flat on his back. So dark that he had to move close to the bed and squint very hard at the sleeping deer's head. Before he could choose the right kind of a toy, a doll for a girl or a train for a boy. But all this took time and filled Santa with gloom. While slowly he groped toward the next reindeer's room, the door he just opened, when to his surprise, a dim but quite definite light met his eyes. The lamp wasn't burning, the glow came instead from something that lay at the head of the bed. And they lay, but wait now, what would you suppose? The glowing, you guessed it, was Rudolph's red nose. So this room was easy, this one little light. Let Santa pick quickly the gifts that were right. 
how happy he was till he went out the door. The rest of the house was as black as before. So black that it made every step a dark mystery. And then came the greatest idea in all history. He went back to Rudolf and started to shake him. Of course, very gently. In order to wake him. And Rudolf could scarcely believe his own eyes. You can just imagine his joy and surprise at seeing who stood there so real and so near while telling the tale we've already told here. Poor Santa's sad tale of distress and delay, the fog and the darkness and losing the way. The horrible fear that some children might waken before his complete Christmas trip had been taken. And you, he told Rudolf, may yet save the day. Your wonderful forehead may yet pave the way for a wonderful triumph. It actually might. Old Santa, you notice was extra polite to Rudolf regarding his wonderful forehead. To call it a big shiny nose would sound horrid. I need you, said Santa, to help me tonight, to lead all my dear on the rest of our flight. And Rudolph broke out into such a big grin, it almost connected his ears and his chin. A note for his folks, he dashed off in a hurry. I want to help Santa, he wrote. Do not worry said Santa. My sleigh I'll bring down to the law. You'd stick in the chimney and flash he was gone. So Rudolf pranced out through the door very gay and took his proud place at the head of the sleigh. The rest of the night, well, what would you guess? Old Santa's idea was a brilliant success. And brilliant was almost no word for the way that Rudolf directed the deer in the sleigh. In spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low and made such good use of the wonderful glow from Rudolf's uh, forehead at each intersection that not even once did they lose their direction. While well, as for the houses and streets with a sign on them, they merely flew close so that Rudolf could shine on them to tell who lived there and just what to give who. They'd fly by each window and peek in the room. Old Santa knew always which children were good and minded their parents and ate as they should. So Santa selected the gift that was right, while Rudolph's uh, forehead gave just enough light. It all went so fast that before it was there, the very last present was given away, the very last stocking was filled to the top just as the sun was preparing to pop this sun woke the reindeer in Rudolph's hometown they found the short message that he'd written now then gathered outside to await his return and were they excited astonished to learn that Rudolph the ugliest deer of them all Rudolf the red nose, bashful and small. The funny faced fellow they always called names and practically never allowed in their games. Was now to be invited by all, far and near, for no greater honor can come to a deer. Then riding with Santa and guiding his sleigh, the number one job on the number one day.
the sleigh and its reindeer soon came into view and Rudolph still led them as downward they flew. Oh boy was he proud that they came to a landing right where his handsomer playmates were standing. These bad deer who used to do nothing but tease him would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier they had been bad. When Santa said, Rudolph, I never had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you at fighting black fog and at guiding me through. But you last night's journey was actually bust. Without you, I'm certain we'd all have been lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief on future dark trips as Commander in Chief! But Rudolph just blushed from his head to his toes until his whole fur was as red as his nose! The crowd first applauded, then started to screech. Hooray for our Rudolph! And we want a speech! But Rudolph was bashful despite being a hero and tired. His sleep on the trip total zero. So that's why his speech was just brief and not bright. Merry Christmas to all! And to all a good night! And that's why... Whenever it's foggy and grey, it's Rudolph the Red Nose who guides Santa's sleigh. By listening this Christmas, don't make a peep, cause that late at night, children should be asleep. The very first sound that you'll hear on the roof, provided there's fog, will be Rudolph's small hoof. And soon after that, if you're still as a mouse, you may hear a swish as he flies round the house and gives enough lights to give Santa a view a view in the room and when they all through you may hear them call as they drive out of sight Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night The end Kids, if you like this video Please subscribe, like, and share for some more videos. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Good night, moon, in the great green room there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of the cow jumping over the moon and there were three little bears sitting on chairs and two little kittens and a pair of mittens and a little toy house and a young mouse and a comb and a brush and a bowl full of mush and a quiet old lady who was whispering hush good night room good night moon good night cow jumping over the moon Good night, light, and the red the balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Good night, kittens, and good night, mittens. Good night, clocks, and good night, socks. Good night, little house, and good night, mouse. Good night, comb, and good night, brush. Good night, nobody. Good night, mush. 
and good night to the old lady, whispering, Hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere.